Man, this is the good life. Woo! Let's go, guys. Let's go. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Just wait till I play this up to show y'all the meat. Good eat. Man, look at that. Cooked over a charcoal fire by the river. This is some real majestic stuff here, boys and girls. Y'all gonna go wow. Stay tuned. <laughs> Right, guys we just got out to uh one of my favorite spots but it only works if the water is high let me show you what i'm talking about here when the water's high it creates a pool right here the water comes almost to the top of this ridge right here if you can see that and anyways when it does the fish really pile up in this area and you can uh, really have a lot of good luck today. Keep on going uh, farther back in the mountains. Check this out, guys. And this is why you drive a Toyota, ladies and gentlemen, right here. It's like a knockoff Toyota. Tacoma from Wish.com. And that's what you get right there. Look at that. Maybe see if we can throw out in this area. Maybe put some bait below a bobber and let it come down here and reel it back in and hit that a couple times and see what happens. Let's get the net ready. Looks like we're gonna have to rig the poles up today. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's try this spoon.
All right, let's get one more over here. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, try a couple other techniques. Let's get a worm out here somewhere and maybe drift something through this at the same time. If you haven't seen one of these before, you need to get one of these. So I'm gonna show you what we do here, right? I used to fish worms without one of these. Years ago, I discovered what this was. And it basically changed the game for me. So check it out, here's what you do. You slide it in the worm like so. And I like to leave a little tail on this side and a little tail on this side, all right? And now you take your hook and stick it in the end of this. And here's the important part. Pull the line tight and hold it. Slide the worm up and over that hook. Get it over the eye of the hook. And these worms really fight you on this. So you gotta hold that line tight. Don't let go of the line. And you can slide it right on the line like that. You see that? And you want the hook just barely sticking out of it like that. Now this is gonna be uh, money because it looks like a real worm. When it's wadded up on the end of the hook, it's not the right presentation. This appears to the fish like a real worm with the hook staying outside of it. So we got some um, fluorocarbon leader line on here tied to a swivel. And above that, we got one of these bullet weights. I like this because when you're reeling it in, the bullet weight's coming this way and it's a lot more likely to slide through rocks and debris, all right? It's actually genius. I've used a lot of weights in the past. These seem to really uh, fight through the debris on the bottom and uh, not get your gear stuck uh, nearly as much. So that's another tip for you there. So check this out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fish this area over here. So I like this spot over here to the right to be able to throw something out and leave it. You see the currents coming over here. It's kind of sliding off to the right there, kind of coming back this way. Right out there in that middle, there's gonna be fish hanging out on the side of this current. Just uh, for easy picking, waiting for this current to bring food to them. All right, first shot. Let's get it out there. Money. All right, let's close that bell. See how that treats us. We see our lines kind of pulled over this way by the current. Hopefully that didn't really drag our bait too far over there. We got a lot of slack in the line. What I think happened is we're sitting down kind of under the current over here in this hole. Pulled us in a little bit more than I wanted. Let's see if anything might be down in there hanging out. Might not be a bad spot to leave it, but it's gonna float something through here on a bob or two. So we might wanna get this more out here kind of in these uh, less intense waters. That's why you don't wanna be in that current. Come on, come on. All right guys, let's try this again. I'm gonna cast a lot more to this right side over here in this calm water, see what happens. Yeah, see this current's grabbing my line and pulling it back this way. I might go ahead and leave this in the pole holder. You know, sometimes guys, don't be afraid to let the current pull your line and do what it does because realistically, any bait that's in the water, the same thing is happening to it. You know, it's a beautiful day out today, man. It was raining, you guys saw on the drive up here. What a blessing, man. Look at how beautiful it is out here. Look at how beautiful it is out here. Wow. All right, check that out. We got our weighted bobber. We got a bead about four foot down. We're gonna fling this out here in this current and pull it over here and back a few times. We got over here, look, we're jiggling, jiggling. Still ain't a, still ain't a bite though, so don't, don't worry, calm down. You'll see that pole bend when we got one. There's the bobber right out there. That bobber's hanging out in a money spot. If we can stay in that zone, we might get some action. Now we can see that bobber. If it goes under, we know we got a bite. And guys, like I was saying, fishing those eggs right now, I mean, we're the middle of May. This is spawning season. 
that these fish are on the lookout for eggs. So, yeah, I was planning on drifting this, but I'm not mad about it hanging out in that area. That's kind of where the current is naturally taking food anyways. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if there's fish over there uh, in that area. Guys, we're floating those eggs. I got three eggs now tied about two inches above the hook. A bobber about four foot up. You know, and I have a feeling that um, if we don't get this here, we'll try it for a few minutes. What we'll do is we'll actually move that bobber up about a foot or two and uh, see if maybe these trout are a little farther down in that pocket there. Very well could be the case. I added a split shot about a foot above those eggs. So I'm actually gonna let this sit here with that bobber. We don't gotta worry about it too much. Now this line is over here in the current and our bobber's over out here. Now what's unfortunate, if we try to get this slack out, it's gonna drag our bobber and our bait back up this way because the current is just holding that. Man, our bobber disappeared. Let's see what's going on here. I see it again. Okay, this is a better situation. We're still in that same area, but it looks like we were able to get a lot of that slack out. I don't want to reel it in too much. I feel like that's a great area that we're hanging out in. We got a lot of slack out of the line. You could tell that it came back in a good 10 yards though, and it was dragging through that current, just like I said it would. I think we're still in a good spot. We're gonna go ahead and leave it like this. That bobber will disappear. Something's gonna take those eggs underneath it. And this one over here has been giving me a little bit of anxiety with all this jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Let's see what's going on here with this worm. Don't tell me we're stuck, come on. Uh, that current probably dragged it right under a rock, man. I don't know if bottom fishing is the key today. We might have to throw some lures and bobber fish. Ah, uh, looks like there's a piece of wood out there, man. I can see it out there. Let's go ahead and throw a, uh, throw a lure on here, guys. We'll leave this one on the bobber over here. If we don't get any action on those eggs, I'm gonna throw a night crawler under that bobber and do the same thing. I'm actually gonna throw a bell on it too. Cause I'm gonna be throwing a lure over here. And that way I don't have to keep an eye on it. So, here's what I got going on here, guys. I got this rubber rainbow trout lure here. Tied onto a barrel swivel with a clip. Got a weight about, uh, I don't know, about a foot and a half, two foot up. That way it's just gonna keep it down a little bit. Help us be able to cast a little nicer. So what we're gonna do, as this one's out here, we might hit this a couple times, but then fish on the other side of our pull after that and see if we can get anything over there too. Guys, and that current's putting a good amount of pressure on that. So it's keeping it off the bottom. The current's pulling it that way, we're pulling it this way. You know, sometimes I'll even leave a spinner or something in the current because the current gives it the motion and it'll hang out there and be like this. Brrr. Now this one won't do that quite as much, but needless to say, oh man, I might've just missed a bite right there. I either got her snagged a rock for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and just say we missed a bite. Gets the blood pumping for the rest of the day, huh? All right, guys, we still got that bobber out there with those beads on it. I'm gonna throw this rubber lure over this way and see if we can get some action. Let's give it a little bit more speed on that fish. These fish up here in the wild, oh! Ah, got a rock, man. You guys got excited, huh? You guys thought I had one right there. Gotcha. But what I was gonna say before that rock so rudely interrupted me is that these mountain fish up here, they're not stupid. So sometimes you give a little faster of reel 
they can't get a good look at your lure. Guys, I might have just got hit again. Either that or there's that same rock interrupting what I'm trying to tell you. And what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you got to reel in with a little bit of speed. So these wild trout, you know, they can't get a uh, good look at your lures. And they can't tell that it's a, you know, a rubber rainbow trout instead of a real one. Looks like fishing game is stopping by to see us, guys. We got our permits. We're gravy. Come on now. What's up, guys? Yeah, come on. Trying to trying to catch one for you guys. Did you guys see that Nissan over there? The yeah. wild. That's why you buy a Toyota. <laughs> you know, only been out here about a half hour. The river's kind of tricky today. Yeah. I mean, it's not too high, but that current's kind of nasty. So I got some eggs below a bobber on this one. See what'll happen and throwing this rubber rainbow trout lure over in this area. Let's see what bites. Yeah, this exact spot's produced for me in the past, yeah. but I mean. Usually it's pretty good in lower water. So. Yeah, it all depends on that current, man. You know, when the current changes, your spots change, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and with all the water, it pushes certain things down and you don't know where anything is. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys need to see my stuff? Is that what we're doing yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, guys, fishing game, checked all my stuff. They're out of here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get these beads out of the water. I think we're gonna try a worm. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a good a worm on here, float the worm down in that current. Let's give that a shot, guys. Come on. Guys, I don't see the bobber. We definitely had a bite, but I don't know if it's there. If we had something on there, we'd be feeling it, man. Man. Oh, we got it on the, oh. Is it, guys, we got it, we got it, let's go. Let's go. Oh man, I don't know if it was on there the whole time or it came back for it when it saw its lunch disappearing. Let's go guys, let's go, we got a good one. It's still on. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, here it comes guys. Let's get it up here on the bank. Man, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go guys. First one of the day, it's a beauty, look at that. Guys, let's go. Look at that beautiful native rainbow. Let's go guys, that's gonna be lunch. We're gonna cook that up for you. Woo! All right, all right. Look at, oh man. Oh, she's mad at us. All right guys, let's go ahead and uh, put her out of her misery. Just like that, it's a nice little trick, huh? One dollar at Walmart, let's go baby. So what we had is we had, man, they're gone now, but we had, what I did is I put those beads with a night crawler. Woo, and that was the magic ticket, baby. And we were fishing about five or six foot down. Let's go guys, check it out. Check it out, woo, woo. Got a nice, beautiful native rainbow. This is lunch, guys. Check out the setting too. Look how nature is treating us today. Let's go. Fishing right here on the beach. Okay. Guys, what's hot and what's working today is we got a bobber. Five feet down, we got a split shot. And about two foot under that, what we do is we got a worm with a couple of eggs. Okay. 
Hey, that's the trick. That's the money today. We tried about four or five things, and then boom, we got one on that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this actually on a stringer, throw it out in this cold water, keep it nice and fresh for lunch. Because I'm gonna cook it up for you guys here, you know, in an hour or two. All we brought, you know, was a couple of snacks. So we were planning on this. We were planning on dinner. We're gonna get it in, guys. All right, I'm gonna throw this on the stringer, throw it in the water, and we're gonna get back at it. Let's go. Through the mouth through the gill is this a cutthroat rainbow hybrid i think it is ladies and gentlemen wait till you see the meat on this girl I need to find somewhere where we can throw this with the current's not gonna mess with it too bad might just need to throw it right out here and guys every time you do this you got them on a stringer put it under a rock you don't want to lose your lunch like that. Make sure it's holding it down. All right, guys, let's get back to it. I'm gonna slide another one of these eggs on here. Okay, so now I got a total of three on there. And then I'm gonna come back to our night crawlers. I'm gonna grab another one here, okay? You guys know the drill. You gotta have one of these. If you don't, step your game up. It's an essential, okay? And then guys, remember what we want to do, we want to leave a little jiggly jiggly here and a little tail over here too, okay? Put this on the tip, line tight, got to have the line tight, it ain't going to work right. Pull that worm on there like that, slide it on. Now you see the setup, okay? We got the eggs and we got the worm and the hook's barely sticking out like that, guys, okay? And then we got the split shot. You know, a foot up, foot to two foot up. I got about a foot right now, okay? And then here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna wash our hands right quick. Oh, man, this is the good life. Look at this. Look at it, it was raining this morning. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna actually put these worms back on ice, guys, because it's getting hot out here. I wanna keep them nice and fresh, okay? All right, I'm gonna do it again. Let's see if we got another one hanging out in the honey hole, guys. The honey hole wasn't producing for us till we switched to this setup. Now, if you can see this, guys, I got a weighted bobber. That's probably a good five or six, six foot above uh, the bait, okay? Once again, the bait is the eggs with the worm. We got a split shot and I got fluorocarbon, about four foot of it tied directly on to my braided line. You guys know I like the braided line. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cast it right out here in this current again and let nature think for us. It's gonna take it and it's gonna stop right in the area where natural bait would, guys. Let's do it, let me show you what I'm talking about. Fling it out there. I don't gotta worry too much about a perfect cast because that current's gonna do the rest. Now check it out, guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let it go out there. We're letting line out, we're letting line out, okay? And we kind of already had figured out where this spot is. It's right out here, so I can see our bobber. It's kind of already past that area. So now, I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit, guys, a little bit. We kind of know the spot already. We got all the drag out of our line. And guys, when I had this set up last time, I set it down in the pole holder and I went back to casting over here. And you guys saw it, okay? You saw it. So this time, I'm gonna hold on to it and wait for that bite. And guys, I already don't see the bobber. So I don't think I got too much slack. You wanna make sure you don't have too much slack so if you're getting a bite, you know. And guys, let's remember not to overreact when we get a bite. When we know we got a bite, let's get a smooth pull. Let's get a smooth pull. Pull on your rod, okay? And get tension in it and just pull that hook deep. Okay, that's all we need to do. We don't need to jerk it right out of its mouth. Trust me, I've done that plenty of times over the years. And you know, I get better with age and I'm trying to share my wisdom with you guys, right? 
Don't overset the hook. We're not bass fishing, okay? We're out here catching these majestic mountain trout. Guys, we got a bite right here. Oh, I might have missed it. That might have been the current. Oh, it's on. It's on. Let's go. Let's go. Number two, guys. This method is killing it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's go, guys. Let's go. We're going to get another one. Oh, we're eating good today, guys. We might have some to take home. I call that the double up. By the river and in the kitchen. Here it comes, guys. Oh, man. Oh, it's fighting again. It's fighting again. It's fighting again. Let's get it in before it gets away, guys. Let's get it onto the bank. We got this nice ramp today. Look at that. Oh, it's working out beautiful, guys. Oh, another one. That is the perfect eating size. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, my. Calm down. Calm down. Let's go. Guys, let's go. Oh, my goodness. Guys, look at that beauty. We are on them today, guys. Another beautiful native rainbow. Guys, I don't think this one's a cutthroat hybrid like that last one. Man, that one was rare. You can see it doesn't have that same marking on it. I'll show you guys later the difference there. This is just a good old beautiful mountain clean water native rainbow ready to feed us for lunch. Let's go. It's number two. We're on them today, guys. Woo! Look at that beauty. Guys, there ain't nothing like it. We are up here in the mountains. Cold, fresh water, native rainbows. Like I said, number two, we found the technique for the day. Man. Oh. We're gonna go ahead and put this girl right on the line here too. And guys, after you have the first one, you don't need to undo it, okay? Because that first one, is the stopper right okay man looks like they're about almost the same size that cutthroat hybrid it's a little bit bigger guys this water is still freezing cold okay this is basically this is going to keep these fish nice and fresh right we figured out the technique guys we're going to get them today there let's get back to it like we did before guys we're letting that current do work for us these fish are in that hole over there man and we figured out the depth they're at. We figured out how not to get snagged. And we figured out what is on the menu for lunch today. Guys, we're gonna get another one here, watch. Do I dare try to set this sucker down in a pole holder and go rig up my other one and see if we can't get two going? I don't know. One, I think we're gonna get a bite before I'd have the chance to rig up the other one. And two, I feel like our lines would get crossed. Especially with this bobber set up in the current. Oh, the bobber just went down. The bobber just went down. What's going on? What's going on? Guys, we got another one. We got another one. Did we miss it? Did we miss it? We missed it, guys. Oh my goodness. It might have been how the worm's on there. I didn't pull the line tight while I was sliding it on. And it came off. And I had to... Oh man, look at that. You guys see that? Alright. Let's just throw that back out there. And What I'm worried about is that tail, guys. That tail hanging on there. I think that's what happened is it bit the worm but we didn't get our hook. Man. Well, let's get this one with a fresh worm back on out there. And you know what, guys? I forgot to put a split shot on. I took the split shots off to try to untangle them too. That's why you see the cast wasn't quite as good on that one, but you know what? It's out there without a split shot. Let's try it this way and see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and set this pull down, guys. And uh, I'm gonna throw a bell on it. I'm gonna go ahead and re-rig our other pull, though, just so it's uh, ready to go for us in case this one breaks off or whatever. We can get right back in the water. That didn't take long, guys. That was like two seconds. I gotta buy it here. I gotta buy it here. Come on, man. I hope we didn't miss it. We had one. 
I don't see the bobber. Maybe get that slack out of the line. We gotta buy it. We gotta buy it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, where's it at? Where is it at? Did we miss it? That's why we. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Let's go. It's on there, man. It's like, here we go. Let's see. Let's see. I love this spot too. We got this ramp to just pull them right on up. We don't even have to worry about netting them. Oh, it's a little guy. Might put that one back. Might, oh, wait, it's a beauty though. Look at the colors on that. Guys, look at that. Wow. All right, guys, beautiful fish. We're gonna get this one back in the water here. Let it grow a little bit bigger for the next person. There she goes. All right, guys, we're back in the water now. You know, so that technique without the split shot on it, you know, it worked for us right away. And that little guy didn't even swallow the worm all the way. Worm's still on there, so uh, I'm actually right back in the water, just the same way we were set up. So let's see what happens. Last time I set the pole down, turned you guys off, and then, well, bam! You probably don't even believe me. You're probably thinking an hour passed. And it's literally, I walked away, saw the pole, had to turn around and pick it back up. So I'm gonna set it down. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, we'll get a bite. I'll bring you guys back for it. Hold on a second. I don't know. I still see the bobber. I don't think it's a bite, but we'll get one. I'll bring you back. Guys, I don't see the bobber. I'm hoping we didn't miss one or something. I also don't feel anything on here though. Where's our bobber at? What happened? There it is. Let's go ahead and recast. Let's check our worm, make sure everything's gravy, baby. Looks good to me. Half of me wants to put a split shot back on, but we got that little guy just like this. Let's give it a let's give it another whirl. Man, what a gorgeous day out here. What a gorgeous day. Man, is that current really sucking the bobber down? Man, I still don't see the bobber. What's going on here? We got one. We got a nice one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, you guys see that jump? Oh, yeah. That's why we didn't see the bobber. Oh, we got our ramp to us. Come on. Come on. This is just perfect for landing fish, guys. This is absolutely, this is a nice one. Let's go. Come on, come on. Don't jump. Come on, come on, come on shore. Let's go. Another nice one. Another one. Another one. Woo wee. Woo wee. Wow. Let's go, that's a keeper. Oh man, you can't see because in the shadow guys let's go wow 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 man what a day guys what a day another beauty another beauty wow guys these are these are the cleanest eating trout you'll see what i'm talking about there's another keeper we're doing work today. All right, let's do it. That's number four for the day. Number three on keepers. Man, what a day. Man, this is good eating. You guys are about to see. I'm gonna cook this up for y'all. I'm gonna cook it up for y'all. Y'all gonna go, wow. 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and build a fire pit here. You'll see what I'm doing. You're wondering why these ones are on top. You'll find out. Just hang tight. All right, we'll get some charcoal. Let's get this charcoal going. All right, guys, we'll let that get going. We'll go play up our fish. Which one do you guys want to eat? And so you can see the difference. Look at this cutthroat hybrid. Look at the, the pink right here. And this right here, right here, will really give it away. You see that? That's why they call it a cutthroat. But this is a cut bow. It's mixed with a rainbow. You know what? We got two beautiful, beautiful rainbow trout here. Which one you guys want to eat? Which one you want to cook up, huh? The cut bow? Let's do it. All right, if you don't know how to fillet a fish, here's your lesson right here. Right behind the gill and down. You guys, we wanna go right down this backbone. Right down this backbone. Now, you come in here, disconnect these ribs. Look at that meat, guys. That's not what they look like in the city ponds, boys and girls. That's some good meat right there. We're eating good, eating good. Not in the neighborhood, in the mountains. Man, look at that. Look at that. Let's get that filet off the other side now. Guys, a little trick is to put a little paper towel down like this. It helps uh, keep that fish from sliding around. Just like that, just like that. Wow, look at those fillets. We'll leave a little snack for the bears or the mountain lions. And you know what, what we'll do? We'll do like that and let the river have it. All right, guys, look at that. Look at that, sorry, I'm blocking the sun. You see that shot there? I bet we've missed a bite, I don't know, but that bobber's still up and the bell ain't ringing. All right, guys, this is my homemade seasoning, okay? Let's actually put the lid back on. Give it a little shaky, shaky, clean, simple seasoning on this wild trout. Oh my goodness. We're eating like kings. So here's what we're gonna do. I love these things. If you don't have one of these fish baskets, just get one. All right, here's how we do this. Check this out. And the one thing about these is when you're cooking over an open fire, these are absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, so we'll get the fire ready, guys. We'll cook that over it. It looks like we got probably another five minutes before this char goes perfect. Man, look at that fish. Let's go. Just like that. Right by the river. Ah, oh, couldn't be a better day. We're slaying the trout. We're in the mountains. We're by the water. We're about to eat good. Life is good. All right, that's gonna smoke a little bit. It's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes. The charcoal's nice and cooked down. We're cooking about four or five inches above it. Fish is probably almost done. Let's go check on it. Man, look at that, all right. Might get it even a little closer, right here. That's what's great about using one of these and doing this rock setup is you can move the rocks, you can get a higher, or lower to the charcoal. And then this, you know, you can turn. Man, it just cooked perfect. This trout is gonna be good. Oh, wow. 
Man, that's almost perfect. A little bit more. A little bit longer. That is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Man, look at the fish out here by the river. Sun's going down. All right, check this out, guys. Wow, this is good eating, man. Yeah, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Oh. This is as fresh as it gets, okay guys? In the mountains, cold water, wild caught trout, pink meat, cooked over a charcoal fire by the river. This is some real majestic stuff here, boys and girls. This is how we do it. If you're curious what this tastes like, it tastes like, like salmon, except like the best salmon you've ever had and a little milder. What a beautiful day, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. This was an awesome trip, awesome day. Uh, man, what a blessing, what a blessing. We slayed the trout here. We ate good in the sun, in the outdoors, getting recharged. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time.